Hello everyone and welcome to Fuse Room. I'm Alberto and this video is about FrackTube. But it's a video about how FrackTube can be used in real-time applications. Can it be used? Does it work in songwriting when you're composing stuff? And the question is really legitimate and it's been asked by a recurring number of people or the question is recurring but the people are different. After I've done that video on the unboxing and the in-use part of FrackTube, and it's a really good question because people that know me know that I have real synthesizers and I have real analog outboard that I have gathered over the years, right? So what happens is when I compose, I like to route the real synths through the different preamps that I have. And I have sort of achieved a static setup. For example, my Nordlead 2X here goes usually to the Mindprint DTC. And the Mindprint DTC is a tube preamp with an EQ and compressor limiter sort of weird thing. I like to route the Nordlead 2X through it. And I have set it up with a little bit of EQ and maybe compression sometimes I use it that I like on the Nordlead. And this is set statically. I never change it. I just record through it. It's nothing super weird, but I think it just kind of helps the sound of the Nordly 2X. And the same goes for all of the other synthesizers that I have. But people ask me, can you use FrackTube as a preamplifier for different keyboard tracks if you have real synths, but you don't have the analog outboard that you have? So we're going to explore this. I have a sketch for just a piece of music that I've been writing. I started yesterday and hopefully this will give me even more ideas to develop it. And so you're gonna be part of the creation, but you're not getting any credit. How cool is that? That's not new, surprise. This is the sketch I was talking about. This is the session. We're gonna start step by step, whatever. And we're just gonna venture through different synthesizers and stuff that I've done, or even virtual libraries with FrackTube. So the drums do this. I'm just going to start by showing you the elements. Drums. Okay. Guitars. Bass. And it repeats, right? So we're listening through these, or at least I am listening through these already through my room correction, which is zero latency, what I've devised. So it's just, it's not adding that much of a latency factor, but it still does. And I am running at 64 buffer sides, which should be sort of represented here by the control panel, minimum latency, 64 samples. So I'm running really, really, fast or short on the buffer size. The frac tube itself is running at 128 of buffer with a lower latency setting, okay? So that's the general gist. And with three instruments here, the one thing where we're gonna use frac tube on is actually not a real synthesizer for starters, it's just a choir. And I wanna let you hear what the choir sounds like without anything at all. There's some inserts here that are turned off. This was the part when nothing was going on, just a sample library. But I didn't play it like this. I played it with some delay and reverb. comes very far away. But then I didn't quite like it because it's just too realistic for the vibe. So what I did was I added FrackTube and I just have a sort of a default and then I tweaked it and now it sounds like this. There's a lot more content in the highs. It's just typical of having it run through a preamplifier, like a tube thing. And in the context of things with the trio that we've played, drums, bass, guitars, it has a little bit more bite. Right? 
Okay, so if you've heard that pickup line on the drums, the reason for this is that it didn't start, the song, the sketch didn't start like this. It started from a Prophet 12 patch. So in order for us to now use the choir the way it is, what I would do is starting right off the bat with going Control right click in Nuendo and then going Render in Place. Now I'm gonna show you my settings usually for rendering it and this is gonna render the delay, the reverb and then the distortion, sort of tube distortion afterwards because the distortion comes after the delay and reverb. It's not before, that's part of the sound. So we're gonna go complete signal path. I'm okay with separate events and I usually like a tail because we, we do have that tail, right? and the sessions and everything is okay. What I want to do afterwards is I want to mute the source event because if I don't mute the source event, I'm going to have the bounce and the original there in place, right? So it's going to get muted and then it's going to get removed. But we're going to see how I handle this because I don't want to take FreckTube out, otherwise I lose the settings. So let's bounce this. And now we have it bounced. So we can call it choir bounce, for example, and this part is just gonna stay like so. It's an audio file, by all means, right? It's very low, it's at the same volume, it follows automation, it's, it's okay, you know, I don't want it to be overcomplicated. This is one of the examples, and I think I should pause here, because this is how you commit to stuff. This is it, I want it that way, and we just go off with Echo Boy, with the PSP 2445, and then we go to frac tube and we disable the tubes here, effectively freeing the two tubes for other applications. So now this choir stays here, it's still a little MIDI thing, which we keep, but we have the choir saved. And I can even delete descriptions and files or call it, for example, choir BNC, just in case, so I see what has been done. Sometimes in the description I like to write, for example, plus effects, so we know that it followed the effects, and off we go. So this is just a simple thing. You have a sample library, you add FreckTube to it, it sounds fine. It's a sort of a bonus added color. You don't need to keep it there in real time, commit to it. Now it sounds scary, but that's how you should do it. Now we move on to the part that actually started it all. This was a Prophet 12 part that originated from a choir patch, I think, or something like that. So let's move over to the Prophet 12 and I'm gonna show you what I have done with the tweaks and stuff. I'm just not gonna say anything, we're just gonna start from the initial patch and we're gonna start. Before we do that, I wanna instantiate FreckTube here. I have an initial setting that will kinda emulate what I have on some tube amps. I don't generally use tube amps on synthesizers, but sometimes I do. For example, as I said, the Nord Lead 2X, I kinda like on tubes. So I go here, I can open a default preset that I have. This will be actually what gets open. It's my set to default, so I've done in here, default preset, save as default preset, and there you have it. And there's a little bit of a bump at around, I don't even remember, 2400 hertz. Drive 6, there is a compensation of minus 4 on the out, fully wet, and there is a bunch of harmonics added, right? This is my starting point, and I like to use 83s, the tubes that I like. So let's move over to the Prophet. I'm gonna play some stuff, and I'm just gonna show you what kind of patch I wanted, but we're gonna monitor it through the Freck tube, and it has absolutely no latency issues at this buffer size. I personally had no problem playing it through in real time, so let's do it. This is how the initial patch sounded like. This is a stock patch in the Prophet 12. And then I've tweaked it around. Thank you. 
The cool part about this is that I recorded it, obviously, eventually, and the part now can be repeated in solo and I can do the final adjustments. Something doesn't quite work, we're gonna fix it. Alright, that's where I like it. Let's hear it together. I wanna raise a little bit of the choir. And I like this. Now, if I wanna play with these tubes, with these settings, I'm actually gonna go to B and we can fine tune the settings here. I actually honestly like where it was, so I'm not gonna touch it. And what we could do here to free these tubes would be to just actually print it, right? But I probably wanna keep this, that's kind of a curveball. I wanna keep this in play. I'm still not sure whether I wanna do some analog mix, some sort of modulation of, for example, the filter. So I don't wanna commit right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable the 83s and I want to add something about it. And I have kind of a lot of options, but I think one cool thing would be the baseline, for example. So if I duplicate this, let me duplicate just this part of the profit. Now, if I play on the baseline with this MIDI part, I should be able to hear it. It sounds actually pretty cool but I want to try and use some frac tube on it. And instead of moving what's happening there, which I would very much like to actually play, I will try and use the frac tube to just get some kind of vibe from probably kind of a band pass. Okay, I'm gonna go and press play and we're just gonna have some fun with the baseline to fine tune where the settings are that I kind of like. Maybe a little bit more of an open cue, and then I can tweak it there. So let's go over that thing. I'm gonna press play. Because this is an instrument and I want to be able to play it in real time, I got to route it through a real audio track. I don't want to keep it as an instrument itself because this is going to record MIDI, right? But I want it in audio. So what I would do is I would create a group track that is stereo and is called recorder or funnel. Sometimes I call it funnel. And the color for me is obviously yellow. Now this track is where our bass line is going to go. And it's recorder here, right? But then we need to instantiate something that will catch the audio from here because we can't record on group tracks, but we can on audio tracks. So we create an audio track, we get the input from recorder and then we set it and we call it baseline bnc which is bounce now i usually 
try and have these tracks, the recorded tracks, not play in the mix. The reason being is I want to hear it once and I want to hear it from the actual printed track. So I'm going to play something I can play with the bass line on and use my key step. It's going to trigger the MIDI from the bass line. So that's a good way to just sit here without going around in the room. So here you see that the bass line is playing and it's going through the recorder. And now we hear it if I solo it. But I don't want to hear it here. I want to see it and hear it from bass line BNC. So I open record and monitor. I see both of them. Problem is, if I solo this one as well, I hear it twice. So, a couple things you can do. A lot of people say, well, you just drop the volume here. If you drop the fader down, you're not going to pass it through the bounce track, right? But what you can do is you remove the output of the actual recorder track. And this I find very convenient in Nuendo. Not all DAWs love this, however, just be wary. So now, unless we have the monitor and or record open on the bounce, we cannot hear the bounce track. To me, this is a good example of how I would like to work. I don't want to double it. Some patches are very hard to grasp on the fact that they're doubled or not. This one was clearly louder, but something with slow transients will kind of sound like it's appropriate in the mix. And then you will find out that it's actually doubled. And so the volume we're getting is not actually there. Lots of issues. So this recorder will work for everything. And now the baseline doesn't even need to be printed because this thing is going to stay there and we're going to use it to print through. So I'm going to go back to the sequence. I'm going to have it play for a little bit, maybe not even loop. And I'm going to instantiate probably, well, I will start from a value that is pretty low. I don't want the click in my ears. We're going to use everything that we have. And once we record the baseline BNC that is going to play the MIDI because it's written there, we are going to work on the filter in real time and we're going to track the whole thing. First and foremost, let me do a test. Let me see if the bounce baseline is actually happening. It should because it's open for record. It sounds fine, but let's do a test run. Actually sounds pretty good. So let's find a starting position for it. And you see, it didn't work when I pressed play because I have it set so that the monitor goes off when I'm recording. So usually good practice is just hit record. I think this is a fair spot. Right? When I press record, the monitor stays there, but in the settings you can tweak it, but you know, I like it that way. So now we're going to do a pass and use the bass line in real time with FrackTube on, playing the MIDI that the Prophet had, and we're just going to go through it and do our filtering stuff. It's going to complement the Prophet 12. Before we move on, you got to remember that because the tubes, the 83s, we are assigned to the Prophet 12 and they're now busy, the Prophet 12 will not play because it's passing through no tubes, right? So let me solo the Prophet 12. You see in here, the tubes that it was using are busy. It doesn't play. The moment I disable the tubes on the baseline, the actual tubes pair of the Prophet 12 will become available again. But unless I assign them, the profit will not play. Now, now it will. Perfect. So it's just a matter of disabling this. We can do two things. We can assign it to the 1287 as sort of like a buffer scenario, just temporarily. So we maintain the sound of the profit or we disable the Frac2 plugin on the profit 12 temporarily. I want to bounce that baseline so the tubes will become available because I'm going to print through it exactly as if it was a preamp, right? So let's use the 1287s. So let's make sure the Prophet 12 is playing. Okay. 
There's a difference, obviously, but at least we get the EQ, the drive, harmonics, a little bit of the behavior, and then the baseline is what we're gonna print, which is this. Right, that's the starting point. So let me close these two. Let me go back to my baseline while we're recording and we'll print the baseline bounce while everything is playing. I wanna play with the whole band. Let's do this. That was actually lucky, because I got the settings at the very end. I promise you, I usually don't get that lucky. So here we go, we trim it just a little bit, and we have our baseline bounce. Now, it's just a matter of coloring things, obviously. I don't know, I'm gonna use some grayish thing. And the recorder has allowed us to print this baseline track, right? Now, the baseline BNC doesn't have an insert, but the baseline the normal one with the MIDI does, right? And it's our frac tube with the two tubes. With this behavior, kind of workflow that I have, I can now turn off the two tubes here on the baseline and also disable the frac tube plugin, go back to the Prophet 12 and just instantiate the two 83 CCs, right, that I had. And now they're gonna play the baseline, we're gonna mute. These events now need to be muted because they have been printed. So we don't need them anymore, but we keep them because we keep track of everything. If I were to go back and reestablish that I like the filter a little bit differently, I can go back to the frac tube, instantiate the tubes, they get back to it, right? Which takes us to the final, not countdown, but to the final stage of how you could use FrecTube as a preamplifier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the FrecTube that was on the Prophet 12 to the recorder track. So anything passing by the recorder group track will get affected by our virtual preamplifier and get printed. So it can work as a funnel for all of your tracks or it can be you know, used on a use case scenario. That's you know, up, just up to you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a new track over the Nord lead right after. We're gonna instantiate whatever, even no input, doesn't matter. We're gonna call it NL2X BNC. And this is now still in gray, right after the Nord lead 2X, our bounce track. What we need to do is we need to set the Nord lead 2X to go out to recorder and the Nord lead 2x bounce to listen from recorder, obviously, right? So I can play my key step and it will play the Nord lead. Right? It does it. But I'm gonna move over it. I'm gonna press record. This is gonna both record the MIDI on the Nord lead 2x on the purple track and the audio on the bounce track. So the question now is what does the Nord lead 2x sound like? with the frac tube or without, does it make the same sense as having the mind print DCC? How big of a difference is there? So the patch I have without frac tube sounds like this. And with? And you might say, well, they sound kind of the same, but they don't sound the same. I'm gonna keep a chord and just go bypass. And you might think, well, it's just louder. Well, it's actually not louder, it's different. Hear that edge? We can tweak it, so we can do. Honestly, I kinda like it where it is. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go and tweak the actual Nord lead, so follow me there.
The cool thing about this is that if you set your DAW to create new takes at each pass of the loop you've set, you will be able to not only just automate a lot of parameters and move things around, but actually to create on the spot patches that sound fine for the mix. Like in this case, a lot of high frequencies, glitches and things that you will then be able to record, right? And then you maybe create something else and you do another pass and just add little details that will open up maybe a whole chorus or will make the song. In things that are very atmospheric, ambient, or even like really driving, you know, strong rock stuff like this, it just opens to a level of organic music that it's kind of hard to get when you create new tracks and have virtual libraries and things. That's why I love to work with synthesizers, with real stuff. You can do this with vocals, guitars, bass, drums. It's just a recorder bouncing track that will have the signal passing through it be affected by our virtual preamp. So this is FrackTube being used, not as creative tool, but just as this is my preamplifier, it just adds a little bit or a lot, it depends on what you wanna do, and that's it. Anything passing through it will get that vibe. And then you can still use it later on in your mix, for example, on the most important tracks, buses, you name it. I hope this was useful and gave you ideas on how to create stuff. That's how I like to compose a lot of real time things, a lot of commitment, because I have no time to wake up in the morning and question myself and my life on whether or not I liked what I did the last day. It's gone, done. So thank you very much, ciao.